Now, if you're a beginner new to calisthenics and you're serious about learning the handstand push-up, this is for you. I'm gonna go through the pathway, the balance, strength, and the drills you need. Now, if you are a true beginner, you're not gonna be ready for most of these yet, but you need to make sure that you understand them, you understand the pathway and the progressions, so when you are ready to start moving through them, you know which order to do them in. First of all, what is the handstand push-up? What's the pathway, what are we looking for? So we start in this straight freestanding position, so here, and then we slowly come down. Now watch what happens as I come down. My head and shoulders go forwards, my feet go backwards. The angle stays the same at this bottom section until the head touches, and then I reverse the movement back up to the start position. So that's the handstand push-up. That's what we're aiming for. So when we're running through the drills and exercises to get us to that point, we wanna make sure that our intention and everything we do is all around achieving that movement. Now the reason that I can do 10 to 15 repetitions of the freestanding handstand push-up at the age of 47 is because I've made my balance very, very good throughout that pathway, and also I'm pretty strong in the push. So as the beginner, I would be prioritizing our strength in the pushing movements, and at the same time, improving your balance to the point where it is so good that you can show control through the full pathway, and also to become very clever with your movement so you can get more reps, you can get your first rep quicker than someone whose balance isn't quite so good. So there's plenty of people that are stronger than me but can't do one handstand push-up, and I can do 10. And that's all down to understanding the pathway and the balance. So when it comes to balance, I recommend you working on three main movements, the freestand and handstand, the crow frog position, and the shoulder stand. So for the freestand and handstand, we wanna make it as simplistic as possible, doing the least amount of exercises to achieve this position that you can move around and have control in. Now, how do we do that? If you're not freestanding already, we need to use the wall. So we need to build conditioning in the position. So that's your chest or handstand. We wanna be holding here for time, building this up until 60 to 90 seconds, super comfortable. We wanna be this position, not this arch position. We need to make sure that we've got a one segment piece from the hands all the way to the toes. So that's number one, we need to build that, we need to make it strong, we need to be able to hang out there, hold a conversation. We also need to start to train the overbalance. So the overbalance is kicking up to the wall, make the body one segment, push through the fingers, reach up towards the toes till you pull from the wall, go back again. Do that for repetitions. Once you can do that for reps, do it for a hold till you pull away, hold one, two, three, four, five, go back to the wall. Build that up until you can get 30 seconds accumulated time and then 30 seconds in one go, pull in between the wall and the handstand. We need to do the same for the overbalance. We need to do the same for the underbalance. So the underbalance is done chest to wall. Exactly the same idea, but now to pull from the wall, I'm gonna use my shoulders. So I pull the shoulders forwards, toes come off, reach up tall, go back to the wall again, repetitions. Once I've got the repetitions there, I'm gonna to go to holds. So there, hold, one, two, three, four, five, go back to the wall. Build it up again, get up to 30 seconds, and then freestand it. Now we're looking at six months, 12 months to get that freestand handstand, the point where we can hold with some sort of control, but start that today. Cool thing with the freestand handstand balance work is that you can do it nearly every day as long as the wrists feel okay, but start with less volume and slowly increase as you get more conditioned to it. Now at the same time as the handstand balance, we need to be getting super strong and controlled in this frog crow position. Notice I'm controlling my position by moving my hips and my shoulders, but it's being controlled by the bend in the elbows. And that becomes very comfortable. I can start to extend up, one leg up in the air, both legs up in the air, and just play around with that. So you can start building upon that, understanding the position, understanding that movement of the hip and the shoulder that's really important. Same thing in the shoulder stand position, so becoming super comfortable in this position. Notice the angle, so the shoulders are here, the hips are here, I've got the angle. It's the same as the angle of the bottom of the handstand push-up, so there it is there. And then having the ability for, to go from the shoulder stand through to the L-sit and back again. Exactly the same as we was doing, with those crow transitions, moving the hips and the shoulders at the same time, controlling the movement with the elbows. Again, both of those are gonna take some time. Build it first with the static positions, then start to work on the transitions. Then we need to be realistic about our strength. Where do we need to improve on this? Are our push-ups super strong? Can we do 10, 20 repetitions, hold a conversation while we're doing them? If we can't, we need to work on those. We need to increase, increase our pushing strength. We need to be able to do the same of our dips. Five to 10 comfortable reps while holding a conversation is gonna be really useful. So having lots of push strength here, 
keeping the body one segment, pushing up and down, five to 10 reps comfortable, is gonna make all those handstand push-up drills much, much easier. And then we have overhead pressing strength. Now this is normally seen with a barbell, or you could use dumbbells, but I prefer to go to barbell and just see how heavy you can go. Now you can do a push press, you can do a strict press. If we're gonna do a strict press, I'll be working to around 80% of your body weight for one to two repetitions. If you can get around there, you should have enough strength to carry over to the handstand push-ups. You don't need to have body weight, strict press for one handstand push-up. Remember, I can do 10 to 15 repetitions. I'm about 77, 78 kilos at the moment, and I can strict press around 70 kilos for one repetition. So handstand push-ups are much easier than overhead strict pressing. But obviously having more strength there is just gonna make it easier compared to your body weight. And then as your balance and your strength improves, you can start to integrate and start to add in some of these handstand push-up specific drills. Starting with the pike push-ups is a good place just to test yourself to see if you can get full range of motion, aiming for around three, three to five repetitions. The cool thing in with each of these, they can be progressed. You can add deficit variations. You can raise the feet, for example, on the pike push-ups. So do some research, become an expert on them, know the progressions, the regressions of each one. Try them if you don't feel stronger, wait until your balance and your strength is better, then go back to them, keep progressing through them. But normally if you're struggling with these, you need to come back and look where are you missing stuff? Are you missing balance? Are you missing strength? Are you missing understanding of the pathway? Now, if you are totally new, there's a lot to take in here. So drop any questions down below. Let me know if you need any specific videos on any of those. I do have lots of videos already on the handstand push-up, but I personally train it every other day. So I'm more than happy to keep doing the videos. Just let me know what you need down below. If you're after coaching, check out my app, link is down in the description, and I'll speak to you in the next one.